Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I showed you a very high level overview of all the essential components in an MLOps landscape. So we discussed a number of stack components and a lot of their examples for different tools. So as, as you can see on the whiteboard here, these are all the components I've discussed. And today in this video, we're going to choose one of them and we're going to do a very deep dive into using one of the tools to see it, see it in action basically. And then you will have a better understanding of how it works. Right, so let's start with the data versioning component. So we know the responsibilities for data versioning. We need to have a tool that can track data, that can make it available on demand. So basically you can have the option to pull this data whenever you want in any project, or you can also share this data set, or this version data set with other people, other people in your team, basically. All right, so, so this is how it'll go. I'll first give you a very intuitive understanding of DVC, what it is, how it works, and how it compares to maybe Git. And then once you have that basics clear, we'll then move on to the coding part where I'll show you this uh, DVC in action. So we'll have a sample project and then we'll start to add data to it and then we'll track all those things. So we'll have a better understanding of how exactly it looks like. All right, so I'll close this window so there's no distraction at all. And then let's we'll just, uh, we'll just have a small discussion on what exactly our needs are when it comes to DVC. Okay, so let's imagine a scenario where um, you have data that needs to be tracked. So the first step that comes in your mind is why not just use Git? Like you use Git for already tracking all your code files, right? So why not do that for the data files as well? So one reason that we discussed last video as well is that Git cannot handle large files. So if you have huge data, then it can't be tracked through it. So that is one uh, immediate problem. So what is one obvious solution that comes to your mind? So one of those things could be maybe to not track the huge data, but maybe some representation or some resemblance of um, this data can be tracked, right? So something that can capture the essence of the data, but it's still in a very limited size. Like that is the first that it comes to your mind, like not just track the huge data, but just a small section of it. So one, one tool that can help or one uh, concept that can help with that is hashing, as you may understand. So if you hash the contents of whatever files, you get a fixed length of fixed length string, basically. So that is one really nice concept that you can have. So let's just brainstorm through it. So yeah, we're not going to track the entire data. We're going to maybe hash it and have a string which can be tracked. All right, so that's, that solves the question of not, able, not being able to track it through it. But how exactly do you read the data now? Because you can't just read uh, data out of a hash. So that gives you an understanding and that gives you an idea that maybe you can store the data somewhere in some backend and then maybe that, that backend is indexed, the data is indexed through this hash value. So maybe you can have maybe just a map like setting where you just supply this key, which is the hash, and then you get back the data. So that gives you an idea of having some kind of remote storage. And then this is indexed through this hash that you have. So you basically just track the hash and then you just use that remote storage to pull that data depending on this hash value. Right? So that I think in all captures the part of DVC that we're going to discuss today. So DVC offers multiple different things, but the part that we're going to focus on today essentially works on this principle that we just discussed. So you have a hash, you have a storage, and then basically you use these two to actually pull any data you want. Okay, so with that background set, now let's jump into the code. I have a very simple project here. So let me just show it to you. Yeah, this is the source file. So it's just pretty simple. We just read it. We won't even need this file because I can just show it to you on the ID itself. So here's a data folder. So there isn't any data here. So We'll start by putting data into this. So let's step back a bit and then imagine a workflow. Okay, so I am here in this workspace and maybe I need to track some data. So first, let me just create a sample file here, maybe data.txt, right? So this is a pretty simple file. And maybe I'll add, hmm, let's say first version, first version of data. That is what I'm going to fill it with. All right, that is the idea. Now. The first obvious step is, okay, you may be tempted to add it to the Git. And that is okay, but let's imagine that this file is actually huge and not just one line of text. Okay, so in that case, I can't just do git add. So what DVC does is basically it offers similar commands to git. So before we actually start working on anything with DVC, let's just do DVC in it. Because that essentially sets up different files, which I'll just show you right now. So once you have done DVC in it, it creates this new folder, which is .dvc. So we'll be discussing all these components later on. So I'll just showing it to you, showing you uh, what exactly changed after running dvc in it. 
there's one dot dvc ignore this that's these two changes which come in basically and now once that is done let me do a dvc add so what dvc add does i'll just show it to you once we are done running this command so basically you just specify the path of the file that you want to track so i want to track the data.txt file so i'll do dvc add data slash data.txt so in that case dvc does all of its stuff and then it creates a new file here and there are some changes which you're going to observe right now what happened a first file gets created which is data.txt.dvc so essentially it has the same format as before but it has a .dvc extension in the pan so what does it look like it shows you an output section which has this md5 hash so again this is similar to what we discussed before so it essentially took the value from this data and then it created a hash out of it there's also this size attribute which maybe tracks the size of the data so all of this is now part of a configuration which you can track so this is a part of your data which you're actually going to commit to git as we discussed before and this is a part this is a which watch holds information about your data and if you'll see the data txt is no longer getting tracked because there's a git ignore file inside the data folder which gets created which is which has now this path the data.txt path so you're not going to track data.txt but just this single file all right now you may ask the question um, where is that storage like where do you exactly store this file essentially so you also see there's a new uh folder that gets created which is called cache now this cache has this file which is the exact same uh, file as your data, right? So you have this data here, first version of data, and this is the same file here. So what DVC essentially does is when you do DVC add on any file, it takes that file and puts it into the cache. So this is the cache which I'm talking about. And the file here is just a link to this cached version. So you don't have duplication of files. You don't have two files with the same content lying around. This file which you have in your workspace is essentially a link, it's called a ref link, to this cache right so this is the idea and this cache if you see properly it's indexed with the hash so if you go into this file let me just show it to you what the hash looks like it looks like ac starts with ac 15 right so now this ac the first two characters is the part which becomes a folder and the file name starts with the next uh, the, the, the remaining characters that is the idea so this is a cache every time you make some change so let's just try making some change okay so first version of data I'll maybe add modified. Let's just do a very small change here. All right. Now, when you do this, and then I again maybe do DVC add. Right. So it will again track this data and create a new dot DVC. And now here you see the hash has changed. So this hash now corresponds to the new version of the file. And if you look into the cache, you have two different files here. You have the older version and you have the newer version. Right. The one question you may have right now is how do I actually move between these two different versions of the data? For example, if I want to go into say the first version of data itself, so I don't want the modified part here. So how do I exactly do that? That is tracked through this DVC file. But if you remember, we didn't commit this file from the previous version, right? So we don't know exactly what the hash was. So every time you do a DVC add, you also have to commit this file, the .dvc file. So what I'll do is I'll just go into the section here. I'll do a DVC and look at this changes here. So this is the change which happened. I'll actually commit this file. So maybe I'll do add modified version, right? So this is the commit I did. And now since you have committed this uh, file here, you now have it tracked in Git. So basically whenever you want to go to a previous version, you can always choose this particular commit to come back to. You can check out this commit and then you'll have the same data. So I'll just show it to you again. So maybe what I'll do now is I'll create a second version. So I'll just write a second version here. And now what I do is again, I'll add this version here to DVC. Okay, perfect. So you'll see the hash again changed. So now I'm going to track this hash again. So I'll just do add second version. All right. Okay, so now how do I go back to the previous version? I'll do a git log, right? So here you can see this is the modified version. So if I want to go into this particular section, I'll just copy this uh, hash here. I'll do git check out, sorry, git check out. There you go. So it has now changed it. Now if I go back into the data.txt file, oh, I don't have that version yet. So how did that happen? So what we expect is when you switch between different com git commits, I should have had the first version data modified written here, but that is not the case. Let me look into the .dvc file. Okay, this shows the changed hash. So this has the hash which corresponds 
to the modified version. But how do I make data.txt comply with this thing? So there's a function with DVC which is called DVC checkout. What DVC checkout essentially does is it makes your data files comply with whatever dot, dot whatever the dot DVC file has. So if I do DVC checkout, what it'll do is it'll transform this data.txt to actually match the version which you have in the cache. So if you look into the cache here, so the file which corresponded to this ed2 uh, hash is this file. And this is the same file which is also mentioned. So this is the same hash which is also mentioned in this particular file here. This again uh, reflected here in this data.txt. That is the idea. So every time you do DVC add, you also commit the changes so you can keep track of all the different files that you are already tracking. And if you don't, and if you don't commit, then the other hacky way is again, maybe going into the cache and then stitching these two uh, directory and the name together to form a hash and then putting it here. That is one way of doing it. Like you can just copy the hash value from here and put it here and do a DVC checkout. So that'll also, you know, pull the latest, uh, uh, well, not the latest, but the right uh, version of the file into this data.txt file. Okay, so I think that that gives you a strong idea of how exactly DVC functions. So using a cache, using a data.txt.dvc file, this is how it actually tracks your data. So this is the most important file here. And then this is just the storage of all the different versions that you have. Now, if you if you imagine that you have other team members who also want to access this storage. So how exactly do you configure this to be accessible to everybody, right? So this is right now, this cache folder is in your local machine, right? So you have to push it, like just like you push your code, you also have to push this cache somewhere, right? So what essentially this means is, this cache, although it stores all of your data, you can move this data out of your workspace because it's not being tracked anyways, right? This is this is the part of the uh, part of your workspace data which is not exactly being tracked. You only track the .dvc files, so you can easily shift this storage into any remote cloud, in the remote cloud or your own local machine. That is an option with you, right? So what you do is DVC has some functions like DVC push, DVC pull, which are used to actually push all of this cache to a remote storage or any kind of storage you want. Maybe in this video, we'll just show you a local storage, not a remote storage. And you can also pull from that storage later on. So what I'll do is, first of all, we'll have to add a local storage to this function. So what I'll do is I'll first add a DVC remote. So we'll do a DVC remote add local. And this will be the name of the directory which you want to store your cache to. So I already have a directory by this name, I think maybe, I think it has a DVC storage. I'm not really sure, but I'll just check. Yeah, there it is. So I have added this remote. So now when I do a DVC push, my cache will be pushed to this particular uh, remote. So what I'll do is I'll do a DVC push R local. So R specifies what remote you want to push it to. There it is. So once you do that, you see there's one file which is being pushed, which is the reader.txt file. And now this has multiple files, but DVC push only pushes the, whatever the workspace file you have right now. So if you want to push all, all branches, there's also commands for that. You can do dash dash all branches and maybe that uh, pushes all branches and all, all, com all commits. Maybe that is also covered in some of the flags. So you can use that command to actually push all your cache uh, to this remote. And moreover, you can also delete this cache from this space here once you have pushed it. So you don't need to have it on your local machine if you just post it to some remote storage. So this reader TST will still be able to pull from there. There's also this DVC pull command, which is useful when you actually have, say, some, some sort of data you want to actually pull back to your local machine. That is pretty simple. I think that's straightforward to understand. You also have DVC import. So that is maybe something like git clone. So what it does is basically it copies whatever, like if you have some data which is built by somebody else, you want to import that new project, you can also do that. So you can check out the command reference for DVC in the documentation. So that'll give you a better idea of how exactly DVC works. But I think this short demo gives you some something to start with essentially it gives you a small understanding of how exactly dvc works what is the mechanism in which it tracks data files how it manages huge uh, or maybe large files right that is something I, I hope it gets you an understanding of and also i think you have uh, a better a better better idea of how dvc ad works how git works with dvc to actually store your files this is not an alternative to git it just works with git to actually be able to track your files all right, so to now summarize what we just discussed, I'll do a visual, uh, maybe a diagram of different components that we've seen here so that you have a better understanding for those who want to learn visually as well. So maybe I'll just jump into this whiteboard here. Okay, so you have these different components here. So you have a cache, you have a .dvc file, and then you have Git. So we learned that .dvc files are what actually track your changes through the user different hashes. And you can track these hashes through Git. 
So you can commit every time you do a DVC add. So that that will maybe store this uh, entire log of different hashes that you have, which each hash corresponding to different version of data. That is it. And the cache itself it points to the actual data that you have. So you have say a data.txt file, right? And then this is the file which gets linked to this cache. So your data actually lives in the cache and then it gets linked and then gets gets linked to the data.txt file. Right. And now this cache in itself can be actually stored in a cloud if you want. So if you want to have other people access your data as well, so you can maybe store it in a cloud or you can also have it in your local machine. I'll draw a laptop. <laughs> that is that also you can uh, something you can also achieve through this cache. So you have these two options for the cache. You have a link to the data.txt, which is the actual file. You have a .dvc file, which gets generated every time you do a DVC add. And then this, this file can be tracked through Git, maybe through GitHub or any other uh, repository that you use. So that is the idea behind the very, very simple and short summary of what we just discussed and what, what, what are the different components of DVC that we actually uh, took a look at. And now I think I hope this clears up a bit about uh, data versioning and, and there are other tools as well, which maybe achieve data versioning itself, but we haven't discussed that yet. So feel free to check those out and let me know what you think about them. And we can also discuss any questions you have regarding that. So that is all I had for this video. If you want to have maybe a deeper dive, if you want to go deeper into DVC and explore other parts of it. For example, there's also a place where DVC allows you to specify stages of a pipeline. So you can run a pipeline as a whole with DVC. So all of those are also functions of DVC. If you want to explore that, feel free to do it. And if you have any questions, you can reach out in the comments and maybe we can do a discussion together on that. But okay, this is, this is all we had uh, in the context of discussing uh, data versioning and all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful to you. And I really hope that you use this in some kind of project and then maybe tag me and I'll take a look at it as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon.